Welcome to the Burke's Homes podcast, the business of building homes. I'm Katie. I'm here with my brother, Ben. And today we are talking about interpersonal relationships and how they are the most important. And why are we talking about those things? Because we would like to talk about, well, I shouldn't even say talk about, we kind of want to have a little bit of a series going intermixed here and there. Things that you didn't learn in business school. So we both went to school. Well, you you minored in business, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I went to business school, accounting and finance. And, you know, there, there's like a real value to it. Oh, yeah. Practical value mm-hmm. that I would never give away. Yeah. You know, I, I, would, I would do it over again. And for me, it was like I picked accounting because it was the least worst of everything, you know? <laughs> Like, it was like, I'm not going to do marketing. I mean, whoa. And then it was like all this stuff. It was like management information systems. And there were all these majors. And I was just like, I guess I'll talk about money. The reason it's the best of the worst is because you have to know accounting for business, period. Absolutely. It's the basics. Yeah. 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 Although they did not teach me that in business school. Right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right. But that's that's why we're talking about this, exactly. because there's so much more to understanding how to navigate the business world that you do not learn in school. Now, I will give my alma mater some props because of how successful they are at placing people in their jobs. You know, yeah. so Drexel University, that's where I went it's in Philadelphia, and they have this co-op program where you go work full-time for, uh, you know, generally a large company in Mm -hmm. the Philadelphia area for a full six months at a time. You don't go to school, you go six months and you work. And so when you compare that to other schools, it's invaluable, right? Yeah. And so you have to go through an interview Mm -hmm. and you have to get placed and you get paid real money and you contribute to the work. You're not like an intern necessarily. Like they give you work to do. Yeah. It's a job. It's job. Yeah. There's a four and five year program. Five years has three separate co-ops of six months each. So you get 18 months of real world experience over five years. So apples to apples against other candidates coming out of college, you know, you have a leg up. Oh, yeah. Right. And most of the people actually get hired by one of their co-op companies. So mm-hmm. there's that built-in advantage because they know who you are. However, the training around that isn't necessarily instituted. And when I say training, I mean how to operate in a corporate environment or how to be successful at navigating office politics <laughs> and that kind of thing. There certainly was a little bit of that and mm-hmm. if you took organizational behavior but right. it was not a real focus on what we would call the soft skills, mm-hmm. right? Power skills. Power skills. <laughs> it's power soft, same, <laughs> I guess. So it's rebranded. Yeah. So what we wanted to talk about was putting ourselves back 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. What would we want to know? Yeah. And what would have helped coming fresh out of college? What classes do we wish we would have taken right. to walk into the workforce better prepared? And and we're doing this on our podcast because it's always relevant, mm-hmm. right? It's it's for us now as well as a reminder yeah. of what's important mm-hmm. because we're always getting better and we're never done. We're never complete mm-hmm. in our personal development. But at the same time, if we can help somebody that you know might be listening to this that works here or somewhere else great yeah well and also to highlight the fact that if you didn't go to school you're not missing out on much. you're not missing out on this piece exactly which, you know can be said to be the most important i mean personally i think it is yeah. the most important which is again why we're talking about it and also to just kind of lay it out there it is it is a level playing field for everyone these skills are not things that are on a resume this isn't a technical things that you're you know getting a, a step up from somebody who, who didn't go to school is the way that I look at it right anyway. and and some of us have personality deficiencies when it comes <laughs> to some of these skills that you need to work around well yeah if you if we were talking about this a little bit there's a difference 
between kind of the interpersonal relationship aspect of of things that you wouldn't have learned but there's also the hacks Mm -hmm. like productivity hacks and things like that also aren't taught and you know we obviously have more to learn in kind of the organization time management time management all of that and usually can get by just because some of the power skills come more easily in mm-hmm. some ways yeah you know? yeah so today we're going to talk about the relational aspect of these skills we can leave the productivity hacks for another episode right after we learn how to yeah 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 we'll do it we'll come back to you with that <laughs> or get a guest for that yeah <laughs> andrew again he keeps coming up for <laughs> andrew these lewis things. got it we got to get him on the schedule yes so tell me do you have a little illustration or story of a way that you, you learned a lesson early on, coming out of school, starting on the job, where you realized that maybe you need to work on some of these interpersonal skills more than you ever knew was a, was a thing. Yeah, and I can relate it directly to some of our current employees as well in their roles, mm. that they might not think of this as something that you know pertains to them. Oh, okay. I'm thinking specifically of of our production staff, possibly, but my story is about this. So. Oh, okay, go ahead. I might have told the story previously where when I came out of college, I was very determined to be in the field. I wanted to work with my hands a little bit and and really understand, you know, from the the home building side, you know, every aspect of of the field. Literally from the ground up. Right, right, because I had all those summers of experience as a framer, Mm -hmm. but I never did anything on the back end. Mm -hmm. It was just like when we were done, it was just a shell. Yeah. The plumbers came in, Mm -hmm. you know, so I I didn't get a ton of experience other than a couple summers when I was really young cleaning, Mm -hmm. you know, like pushing a broom and and cleaning up trash and stuff. But I didn't get a lot of hands-on experience at the end and dealing with trades and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. So I was all gung-ho. I bought a truck. I was super excited. I had tools and everything. And I think it was like my second day. And actually, our Southeast production manager, Brian DeJesus, he he left for, for, I don't know, maybe a decade or something, 2010 to 2020 Mm -hmm. or something like that. He was my boss. He was a superintendent, and I was his detail carpenter at the time, called it punch-out guy. And, you know, basically, you come in at the end, you you make lists, you get, out, you get the house ready to be delivered to the homeowner. And one of the items on the list was, I think, getting one of the trades to come back for something the following day. Mm-hmm. And attacked the list early, made a couple calls, and, you know, it was like... I don't know, 7 or 8 a.m., and the the one trade didn't call me back. It was lunchtime, mm-hmm. and he called them. I told him, he said, how's it going? Well, I said, well, you know, this, this one trade didn't call me back, and it was actually a trade that I didn't have a personal relationship with. Yeah. So at that point, because I was a framer for six summers, I knew a lot of the trades, just being around yeah. all the time. I knew a lot of guys, but this was a particular trade that I didn't know. And he said, okay, just hold on. You know, he called. Guy answers right away. Mm -hmm. What do you need? And he said, well, my punch out guy called you like four hours ago and you didn't call him back. And, and he's like, what's up? And, and he, the guy goes, oh yeah, I didn't know who that was. So I just ignored it. And so he, he dealt with it, but it triggered in my mind the value of being in a voicemail, being clear communicating Mm -hmm. exactly what you need in the time that you want it yeah you know he just assumed it was probably and I don't remember specifically what I said Uh but he was led to believe with the way I communicated that it wasn't time sensitive and that he didn't know me so he was just like "Eh," you know yeah and he picks up on like one ring with Brian sure yes sir what do you need (laughs) you know and I specifically remember it because I was like come on man call me back 
Right. You know? But that's such a good point, though, how to reframe your messaging and your communication. Right. And I was young, yeah. you know, and I was probably like, hey, whenever you get a chance, <laughs> like trying to be really nice instead mm-hmm. of just getting to the point and saying, mm-hmm. hey, we have a, not a problem, but I need you to solve something. We have settlement in four days. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our superintendent, Brian, you know, however it was. And that was kind of my first punch in the face of this is like a company that I'm very familiar with. This is my dad's company. I mean, Mm -hmm. I know a lot of guys. And and it was like, well, it doesn't mean anything if you're not communicating well. That's exactly right. So. I mean, and that's not, you do not get walked through how to leave a voicemail. Right. In school. Right. So what I learned was be clear. Mm-hmm. You know, you, when when you need something from somebody else, especially if you don't know, know them, them. Mm-hmm. right? This is the critical part. And when you're new on the job, that's all you're doing. Every phone call is new, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So whether you're just coming out of school or you have a new role in a new company, mm-hmm. that first phone call, that's a new relationship. So, so you're you're saying first interaction is the introduction. Every it's, time you introduce yourself. If I never talk to them, they need to know who I am, what and my purpose is. What you do. Yeah, yeah. what my purpose is mm-hmm. and then what I'm trying to get why, accomplished. Why you need something. And I also need to articulate since I didn't have them on the phone, mm-hmm. the deadline. Yes. The timing of it. That's right? something that took me so long to learn and I still am bad at it when you put a deadline on anything it could be a fake deadline mm-hmm. right can you have that to me by the end of the week that changes the tone it changes everything about the message yeah because it might just be you're trying to feel them out for what the turnaround could be mm-hmm. you know you, you don't necessarily need it ASAP or you know but you could ask the question but you could pose that yeah you you could Mm -hmm. say is it is it reasonable that i could have this done by the end of the week now this brings me to my first illustration of the one of the very first things that i learned being in the workforce not learned in school Mm -hmm. was advocating for my time and setting boundaries oh yeah that's that's a so if you're sending me okay you're introducing yourself we've never met you need something for me and you throw it out there pose the question can you get this to me by friday if i'm also new Mm -hmm. my first instinct is to believe that i have to do it by friday right and a huge lesson is to never say yes if you can't do it it's not going to win you any awards awareness (laughs) yeah one of our core values yes aware exactly so it's not a contract. It is a negotiation when mm-hmm. you're exchanging um, information or if someone needs something from you or a deliverable of any kind. It has to be an agreed upon time and deliverable. Meaning if, if you need X, Y, Z from me, the first available date that I can get this to you is this time. Can right. you work with that? Right. Well, I need this and this before that. No problem. I can get that to you. You have to be able to have that back and forth to truly ask good questions, protect your time, and make sure that everybody gets what they want. We also say win, win, win all the time. Mm-hmm. This is another one of those situations where you you should never say yes to something that you can't deliver on. And why it's so critical is you always want to put your best foot forward too. Mm -hmm. So let's just say you're in that negotiation phase. uh, I'll go back to the example of the trade where he says, well, I really need a week, but I can get it done in a pinch in three days. However, it might not be exactly what you want. Exactly. Yeah. And then you have to make the decision. Mm -hmm. But there's that information exchange, like you said, of, you know, what's most important here? Yeah. Is it getting it done? Mm-hmm. Getting it done right. Mm-hmm. The time is the time flexible, right? Yeah, so those, those are all things. things too that you can put in your communication, even when you're requesting things, right? To follow up that statement of why it's so important to protect your time. When, in my experience, 
of being in the workforce, when somebody's very clear on the receiving end of their limitations and or their constraints, mm-hmm. it's always received well on my end. When oh, somebody's I appreciate it. When yeah. somebody does not over promise, but they're very clear. Mm-hmm. I will be able to deliver that to you, just not in the timeline you requested. Mm -hmm. So if you absolutely need it in that timeline, you might want to call somebody else. Right. That is a fantastic answer. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the best answer that you can give. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But how many people do that? I mean, again, that's something that I still struggle with. I value that a lot Mm -hmm. out of people. Well, it's, again, being good predictors of your own time. Mm -hmm. It's admitting that you can't do everything, having good time management and planning. That's the only way you can respond with that answer. Yeah, and and also valuing the product that you produce. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I would love to do that. I want to do it well. Yeah. And so either I'm going to need more time Or I can't do it, Mm -hmm. you know, and and so making sure that just saying yes might be the wrong thing. Right. Is actually a fantastic exercise. Mm -hmm. And when you have a lot of people that look to you for answers where we're at now, Mm -hmm. we value that a lot. Yeah. You know, that kind of honesty. And it's not like looked down upon it's actually really well celebrated yeah yeah -hmm. Yeah. because it's like oh they they know they know what the capacity is Mm -hmm. and they care about what they put out Mm -hmm. and i appreciate that oh thank you for telling me yeah i don't want to find out in a week when you said it was going to be done Mm -hmm. and it's not done well right to you know my satisfaction Mm -hmm. so that that whole that whole thing that whole discussion it's clarity Mm -hmm. right in your communication Mm -hmm. being direct with you know your expectations Mm -hmm. timing all of that Mm -hmm. and you will win a lot of people over just with those few things yeah and what's interesting is of course you're talking about a million years ago right out of college Mm -hmm. and it's a lot was a lot of phone calls but there's so many different modes of communication now so you've got your calls texting emails teams apps messages in like databases and i mean there's so many forms and modes of communication so this is another segue into something that i'm still learning again all these things i still i feel like i'm still learning that's why we're talking about it is understanding how and this kind of plays into your challenge from last week understanding how you prefer to communicate and also understanding how others do mm-hmm. because just because you send an email with your date time certain which mm-hmm. is basically what we're saying mm-hmm. i need this by this date can you do it? Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that everyone checks their emails with the same frequency that Correct. you do. Or some people might not even know how to use the Teams chat because sure. that's not something that we have officially trained and rolled out and and said this is a part of uh, the expectation of our organization mm-hmm. is that you have to be available on Teams chats. Right. We we have not standardized communication Mm -hmm. methods here right so again that's a negotiation and an exchange when you're communicating with someone if it's someone you won't work you know speak to and communicate frequently you can probably get away with the normal modes yeah a call an email you're probably not asking for something quickly though right Right. You're usually, it's usually a one-off, probably information gathering or Mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, love to meet with you sometime. Right. That's not a dangerous situation. But if it's someone that is a a handoff Mm -hmm. person in the organization, that's a huge thing to figure out. Sure. Yeah. Where... What where can I send you information that is it's easy for you to understand, digest, store? You know, there's a lot of things that I cannot find when people send me attachments in Teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Because it just goes in the chat. It's right. like a text message. Yeah. But at least in text messages, you can search your yeah. attachments and pictures and links and stuff. Maybe right. you can do that in Teams. I've never tried. Actually, maybe I'll. Okay, here's a life hack. <laughs> 
It's probably cool. somewhere. Maybe it's my challenge for the yeah. day. Go figure out yeah. if you can search things in Teams chats. It's probably in SharePoint or something. <laughs> right. The, but that is a, that is an important, you know, it's, again, the awareness of, you know, how, how you might operate is different than others, mm -hmm. you know, and what they value versus what you value. So Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with asking for things in a different way or a different format if that will contribute to your own success. Right, which leads me to the next one, mm -hmm. which would be, well, this overarching theme here is, is building relationships, the value of relationships yes. in the business world mm -hmm. and how to start building them mm -hmm. and gain trust among the people you work with. But mm -hmm. the next thing I would say is the people that you work beside frequently, mm -hmm. daily, and even infrequently, there's nothing wrong with asking them how they prefer to communicate yeah. directly. Yeah. Just oh, of course. That's right what away. I mean. You know, you mm -hmm. walk, walk in the door. How would you like me to communicate with you, you know, on, on a daily basis? Yeah. That people would love that question because they would be like, hmm. Nobody's ever asked me that before, right? right? Well, and I happen. mean, side note, that's like step one of customer service. Yeah. So right. that's just, that should be inherent in any of our customer facing employees. Sure. That's their first question, you know, and when talking about if they need to give a customer something. And well, they're you... trained on that, yeah. right? But yeah. we don't train that elsewhere. Internally. Right. That's, that's what I'm saying. So in building interpersonal relationships with people coworkers, that can be a huge tool in your tool bag to oh, yeah. uh, make sure that you're making that connection and serving each other yeah and people like i said people appreciate it mm -hmm. they love that yeah when they're oh you're asking me. i never really thought about it well how do you prefer it actually i, I don't even know i would say if you're asking me yeah that exact question i would say it depends <laughs> that's my problem right but For, I, like what I would say the way that this is the way that I see everyone else until mm -hmm. they tell me differently. Mm -hmm. If it's very important, you pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. It's a phone call, right? Yeah. Secondary is a text. Mm -hmm. Third is an email. That's that's just me, you know. And you can mix in. This like, is just to have a conversation or to get information. To get information. Well, again, I would I would go through that hierarchy kind of like yeah. if it's something that can wait mm -hmm. you know and and i need to establish a baseline of the communication like again fact gathering yeah it might be hey i'm interested in finding more out about this process in our company blah 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 that might be an email because it's not very time sensitive it's just something that's on my mind that i would like to accomplish in your time right right and I don't want a text message about something that is not time sensitive. We need to talk about next week. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So again, and that's just me. Mm -hmm. You know, like some people might say that they would prefer to get a phone call for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't know. I mean, it just depends on. Well, that's why I'm asking what you. But for, for me, for examples. Yeah, but you know? for me, I don't. I mean, I don't want a phone call about something that you potentially want to discuss next week right you know like I, that's an email to me yeah like we can put it on the calendar yeah i don't think i would ever need a phone call mm -hmm. unless there is an emergency that needs clarification because otherwise everything else can be set up as a meeting to have a conversation <laughs> right well and that's why i say phone call is like the most urgent yes you know that's how it is in my mind too again and I ignore a lot of phone calls because I'm in meetings all the time. Yeah. But at least you have the voice message yes. to back it up. Well, I prefer the text following the call so I can read it if I'm in a meeting. Sure. Or, yeah, like, I don't like when people call and leave a message and then text and then say, hey, whenever you get a chance, <laughs> it's like, well, what is it? <laughs> you know, that that's an email. I thought this was an emergency. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, there, there's generational things, too, sure, that you yeah. need to be sensitive to. But that's why you ask. Right, mm -hmm. right. But that's my hierarchy mm -hmm. because I do love texting as a way of communicating because it's like, it's getting there. You can sneak off a text in pretty much most yeah. hours of the day. But it's also like, it's getting to that person. Sure. 
Yeah. You know, that's uh-huh. why it's a higher priority to me than email. Yeah, same. Because you're not always checking your mm-hmm. email. Mm-hmm. And I do not have email alerts on my phone. No. I do not have I, pop-ups. No, I could know? never. So I have to like hit the app, mm-hmm. right? So I, that's just how I look at it. But in general, being direct and forward with setting those clear expectations up front with people you work with mm-hmm. is a highly valued power skill yes that we can agree on oh absolutely yes so the next level of building relationships to me is making sure that you have access to good information Mm -hmm. and when i say good information like finding people that you can you know mooch off of basically (laughs) mentors oh yeah oh that's huge so there's always somebody, again, let's use this context of coming into a new job. It doesn't have to be your first job. It doesn't have to be out of college, but new company, new environment. You need a buddy. Mm-hmm. You need somebody that's going to kind of give you the hacks of the company, the culture, yeah. all that stuff, but also the technical side. That's now, exactly we're not right. talking about technical today, but... It is really important to identify those people in an organization that seem to just get things done. Mm-hmm. They know how to operate. Yes. Right. Exactly. And you know, they're most of those people. They're probably more than willing to pass along their tricks. Yeah. And they want to help people succeed mm-hmm. if they're performing at a high level, especially when it comes to relationships and mm-hmm. getting things done. Mm-hmm. Most likely, they're welcome the opportunity to help you yeah. as a new person or new employee. Mm-hmm. And so there's a tremendous value in learning from those people, not just on the technical side, yeah. but again, I Relationally. Think, I think most of the stuff gets done, not because you're really good at the thing, mm-hmm. but because you're really good at working with others. Yes, that's exactly right. right? And with mentors, what's interesting is sometimes you think, shown in movies and TV shows and stuff like you get your mentor in life yeah. and everything. Honestly, it's not usually just one person. Oh no. Yeah. It's usually one person who's going to show you the ropes in the politics yeah. or the culture of the organization. And then another one is going to give you your life hacks and another is going to show you how you can develop a career path maybe that you never would have thought of. Right. So Again, it's not just coming in and staying in your little silo or kind of being in a, in a click with one person or a group of people. The best, you know, path to success would be forging relationships with a lot of the established people. Right. And, and most learning like, what you can. Most likely they're like really positive people. Yeah. You know, they're, they're people with a lot of energy around building relationships. You know, that really goes into just a, in general how to be successful in life. Right. How the people you surround yourself with. Yeah. Yeah. You talked about that before. Yeah. And you know. and just coming back to that and thinking about it from a mentorship level, you're kind of doubling down on your uh, success. Yeah. Who do you want to be like? Right. And so kind of picking that person is critical. Yeah. You know, you don't want to be like the guy that is complaining about everything now hopefully most companies would not allow that type of you know attitude in their culture Mm -hmm. um however we're all human beings and we all can have bad days and stuff you just don't want to buddy up with people that are just negative all the time and so downer yeah yeah we (laughs) we we don't like downers Mm -hmm. too much but having that mindset of saying you know i'm coming into this thing like Let me hack the system. Let me understand what it takes to be successful in this organization. Mm -hmm. Because it is different in different organizations. Absolutely, yes. I mean, how many times have you heard from people that that came from a culture that was like really like cutthroat? Yeah, that's the word I was going to use. Stepping on each other to get to the top. Mm -hmm. And and that's not... It does not not work here. That's not our culture. Mm -hmm. Again, we, we... did our core value last week of helpfulness so mm-hmm. it kind of is antagonistic <laughs> to that idea <laughs> but and we we would like to think that we have a lot of tremendous amount of people who would embrace the mentor 
type of relationship. Well, yeah, I mean, that we even talked a little bit about that last week with the helpfulness is how amazing the people are here to help train other people. And it's not just train with the technical. Yeah. It's all of the other things that we're talking about. So I would say it would not be difficult to find quite a few people to, to show you the ropes from day one Yeah, when you walk in. Here. Yeah, and mm-hmm. and that's an exciting opportunity. So it's like I'm thinking about this and thinking, man, you know, I know a lot of us do this, but had I known <laughs> all this stuff, you know, so yeah. hopefully this lands for, for some people. But why do you think that, like, mentors – can create a fast track for you in general my own lived experience yeah what well let me ask you this yeah i'll give you some of mine okay give me some names and in the organization that have been mentors to you and specifically what they did for you okay well this is not a complete list no, 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 no. Never is. Yeah. Because I feel like I learn things from people every yeah. single day. Right. But that early development. Early development, day one, obviously was Deb Payne. Yeah, I was going to say Deb, too. I mean, there's... For what reason? <laughs> because she is good at absolutely everything that I'm terrible at. Mm, yeah, same. And so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you want a buddy. You want to be buddies with Deb. Right. You will well, get some stuff done. That's kind of the point, though, is is that's why I was saying you probably need more than one person. Oh, absolutely. Because someone with your own personality type will help you navigate relationally, but someone who's a lot different than you might be able to help you with hacks yeah polish your or vice versa depending on what your skill sets are right so for for me I wasn't able to get away with the same stuff that I thought I'd be able to get away with when I had to work with Deb well there's yeah there's so everybody has strengths and weaknesses Mm -hmm. right and we are big fans of highlighting your strengths and focusing on those aspects of who you are Yes. More than saying, I have to be the best at everything. When right. It's like pushing a rope in some regards. So, it's a wasted effort. Don't even bother. Right. But there's the minimum required level. And that is where she comes into play for me. Right. Same. Mm-hmm. So with Deb, it's like there's you can see because because she has a different personality than we do. You see right away the value of what her strengths are. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah, like I can meet those minimums at least. Well, and that should be expected. Absolutely. The, I think that that's what she initially taught me. And honestly, dad, because they're very similar mm-hmm. in some of their expectations. So yeah. I would have to say that both of them coming at me mm-hmm. from the beginning really helped me to understand that some of the things that I didn't value and didn't think were important are actually very important in business. Right. The it's base level the stuff. The base level stuff, making sure that I cover the minimum level of details. Mm-hmm. Not everything can be an idea. Right. You have to have a plan. Yeah. You have you have to make sure that your idea is viable or you're wasting people's time and bringing it up. Mm-hmm. I would get these looks like, why are you even talking about this? Yeah, great idea. Cool. What do you... Go what do you... put it in the oven for a little bit. <laughs> <Right>. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Get out of here, kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that was so, so, so helpful for me because I just didn't know. Sure. Yeah, you just bring in, thought of it. bring in me to the room. Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. this is who I am. Yeah. Right. But there's a minimum level that those those different personalities can can get you to at least operate. Yes. You yeah. Know, where mm-hmm. you, you don't look like an idiot. Right. And I, I if anyone wants a mentor that can't complete a project because they're too detail oriented i'm your person yeah i will I'll help you shove you right over the finish line <laughs> get, yeah get, uh, you don't need good that. is good enough <laughs> yeah yeah brandon's listening here because yeah he's come to love this yeah but i've always said to my little perfectionist crew 80 percent to you is a hundred percent for the organization right yeah. it's I promise no one is going to see things that you see. Right. And and it's all it's okay. But that's a different shade of gray. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I didn't notice. Uh, yeah. Either one, finish mm-hmm. it. <laughs> so beyond that, who are some other people you think about? 
well, John Wisner, obviously. Mm -hmm. I've known him my entire life. And the way that he project plans Mm -hmm. is like no other. Yeah. And just keeping track of every single job and every single house that has ever been built here. Right. Yeah. It's kind of disgusting. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's the best way to say it. Yeah. I, I would say I have definitely gone to him for anything that I need to know. Yeah. What's okay. Just what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. He'll bring out his folder. And, yes. Well, mm-hmm. Yeah. That him and Deb are also similar. Yeah. In, in detail department. Mm-hmm. What about you? Uh, I mean, obviously those two, I always have to say John D'Angelo mm-hmm. a little bit, uh, take a little bit from a lot of his personality, yeah. you know, yeah. like, He's a great example of how to navigate expectations mm. and work with many different people on... Oh, yeah. Talk about being able to work with anyone. Yeah. He can work with anyone. Right, right. And he would probably say the same about some of us that like to just finish, mm-hmm. you know, because he's also very particular and detailed and yeah. he cares about everything. Everything's the same priority yeah. you know it's yeah. all you're going to do it 100 percent or mm-hmm. not and so i think that he would probably give you the feedback of hey i appreciate you mm-hmm. for saying no 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 that's good enough it's okay yeah go on to the next thing yeah you know don't beat it up anymore so i've taken a lot from him in terms of you know just he's always kind always patient Mm -hmm. and without being a pushover either yeah you know but but navigating the he knows how to operate different people yeah differently yeah right what were you gonna say brian entrican brian entrican very detailed as well yeah Yeah. not just detailed but in terms of learning something he knows more than most people that we know yeah just he, an encyclopedia uh, absolutely and knows how to he's so quick right so if you if you need help with overcoming objections right or <laughs> negotiating something i mean he is a black belt ninja warrior yes. of of being able to come up with something in a moment right i mean i don't his brain is yeah. incredible so if you if you're having a conversation with him, I mean he can turn you around in circles in two seconds. Right, and but then, he's but he's also thoughtful. He's correct. So it's not and just caring and yeah. yeah, it's it's. I mean it's like you talk about win win win. He's a machine. Yes. Yeah. So Bri- I Brian's learned a great... lot from him in terms of sales mindset. Right. Skills, all of that stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and just plugging away like the guy's just grinds always just he's always doing the next step he Mm -hmm. doesn't get stuck Mm -hmm. he just keeps going yeah I've always appreciated that about Brian and his brother Matt you know like Mm -hmm. he he's taught me a lot about thinking outside the box yeah question everything yeah because that is that's probably like a fatal flaw that I have of taking information at its face value Uh, right right you know not questioning the integrity of the information right and that's a good one and Mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of great ideas that come out of just thinking differently about something Mm -hmm. i've taken that from matt his brother great salesperson really great sales really good at establishing relationships with people and maintaining them and maintaining them yeah Yeah. he's the definition of long-term relationships right right and an advocate like he always wants to do he's really good at keeping the interests of the company in his mind while Mm -hmm. doing the right thing yeah you know he's a good counterbalance to that idea Mm -hmm. you know of of like well we could do this but it wouldn't be as good for the customer right and he he'll bring all that stuff to the table matt's been great for that we kind of meandered out of early mentorship into just talking about everybody in the whole company. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Brian's been here forever, so that, that's, he started that's why. He started at the same time as me, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think for me as well, I mean, I, I got to say dad. I mean, he's my biggest, yeah. you know, mentor in that sense. Just learning, you know, all encompassing ideas of maintaining relationships. Yeah. 
that's just who he is, mm-hmm. you know, without really having a lot of friends, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the least social yeah. relationship oriented person in yes. the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But just the, the value of doing the right thing, mm-hmm. doing what you say at, mm-hmm. at all times, being clear with your expectations, all that stuff, the yeah. fundamentals that you and I might take for granted. Yeah. Well, we've talked about this before. We almost need to save these because we want to do an episode on the lessons that we've learned from dad yeah. very specifically with examples and things. I would love actually we'll insert a little homework for everyone here listening. I would love to know what questions everyone has because the man is a wealth of information and experience. Yeah. And we could spend more than an hour talking about what lessons and what knowledge he's given us. So if there's anything in particular that anyone wants to know, please please email us because yeah. there's we a could, lot we to We could talk write about. a book. We, we, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and hopefully someday we will have enough to share, you know, with, with the rest of the company. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, he would, he would obviously be the original. I mean, I learned a lot from Gary McEwen yeah. um, on, you know, the, the land side. And, and he's, he's another great example of building relationships. I mean, the guy knows everybody. Mm-hmm. I have yet to hear anybody say a bad word about the guy. Never. And he knows everybody. Mm -hmm. And so, and that comes in handy in his career. Oh, yeah. You know, he always has somebody to call. Mm -hmm. And there's something about that, again, starting from the beginning of building your network. Oh, there you go. This will tie this all together. Right. Tying it all together. Mm -hmm. So we talked about how to communicate a little bit. We talked about the value of finding people mentors Mm -hmm. to help you navigate the office and relationships and all that and then you know it's all kind of in the the net of networking yeah you pull it all together all the things that you learn when you first start you you build your baby interpersonal skills with your immediate network which is your coworkers and anyone that you're working with thir- third party vendor trades mm-hmm. whatever that may be customers but then as you kind of grow your footprint it's so important to to start reaching out outside of your business mm-hmm. and into your industry or into your specific area of expertise right and start making sure that you are on the pulse of what's happening and that's that's the best way to do it is through networking right and networking is like its own topic right sure and you know i've i've had various degrees of success of networking being somebody that I don't love I'm an introvert Mm -hmm. you know like it's not my favorite like you're really good at it though but going like the idea uh, the the boilerplate you know definition of networking and like going to a networking event like that's not what I want to jump off a bridge yeah no, no no but it's just building strategic relationships and when I say strategic I don't mean like abusive relationships it's not for your gain and benefit it's it's for the uh, benefit of the other person too it's not yeah. a selfish strategy so i will say one technique that i i never really had it wasn't top of mind it's just natural to me mm-hmm. is connecting other people and that's yeah. how i network yeah is i make sure the people around me can be in contact with With each other with each other Mm -hmm. and And then you become the go-to person right for hey do you know a guy right right and so I've always enjoyed connecting people like I I mean I don't have anything to do with this but you guys should know each other yeah you know stuff like that or Mm -hmm. giving people a name and and Mm -hmm. and when you do that you network yeah 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 yeah. so that's that's one one style but it's just in general, knowing who to call can actually be one of the greatest skill sets that you own. That's exactly right. And that's, I built my career on that, Mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. Knowing who the expert is and not trying to be the expert. Mm -hmm. It's knowing who to call and how to get them to, you know, help yeah. Me or somebody else. Mm-hmm. But it, it takes applying all the things that you said before, understanding, building that first relationship, introducing yourself, how you can provide value to them, mm-hmm. understanding how they b- are best 
successful through communication, again, providing value first, all of these things, then it's not a selfish exchange when you're networking that you're just calling somebody to get something from them all the time. It's more you actually have a relationship with them and you can bounce things off of each other. Yeah, right. That's that's real networking. 90% of the results that maybe happen now were from things that I did a decade ago. ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And it all comes back. But it's always making sure that in any exchange that there's there's something in it for the other person. Absolutely. You know, it's it's networking dies when you just try and get take. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. so having that mindset, I think, is is really critical. Yeah. And those are all tied together. Yeah. And that's a, a little uh, TED Talk. <laughs> uh, I think, that, yeah, we've covered the entire th- realm of everything we want to talk about. So it's your it's your shout out today. Okay. So I would say I could throw this guy on the mentor list a little bit. I mean, I've only known him maybe five or six years. but So it's Tim Matushik. Mm-hmm. He's in my department. He's our director of purchasing. And what I appreciate about Tim is his thoughtfulness and seriousness about everything. Like he wants to do it well, Mm -hmm. right? And most of the time when you have somebody like that, it's like they're like ultra protective of their time because they want to just focus on what they're focusing on. But he has like this vast capacity that I don't even know if we've even tapped it yet. (laughs) You know, like Mm -hmm. he can just, He's a machine. He can just crank through everything. Yes. But I really appreciate Tim's mindset and how he thinks ahead. Mm -hmm. And, you know, nothing is rash. It's always, you know, there's always a specific reason for doing everything. Mm -hmm. And And a return. And a return. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, he should just be known for that. Right. There is never anything he has ever done that's not a return on investment of time, effort, or money. Yeah. He is that the gold standard Mm -hmm. of ROI. When he's working on something, there's going to be a tremendous value later. Right. That that's the best shout out. Yeah. That's something that you cannot replicate very often. And he's he's in a director level position, which there's a lot of you know we have a lot of directors now, and I really appreciate his advancement in wanting to be a better leader too. You know, I see that. Like, yeah. he really takes, like I said, he takes everything seriously. Mm-hmm. But he's also compassionate and thoughtful. And, you know, he, he's always thinking about those around him. I was going to say, talk about relationship building and networking. Yeah. I mean, oh, man. He the, does so much for his community. Yeah. You know, just a wonderful asset for the company. I, I could talk more about will it. A plus shout yeah. out this yeah. week. Love it. Yeah. Okay, so my challenge is tying right back into all of this, and it's going to be network with somebody this week. Mm -hmm. Introduce yourself to someone, reach out to someone. If someone reached out to you and you maybe didn't get back to them, this is the week to do it. Right, yeah. Let's make some connections with people. Yeah, especially in your own company first. Yeah. You know, start with your own people. Even if they're not in your department. We have the perfect opportunity this week at the company meeting, everyone. Introduce yourself to somebody new. They don't know. And Mm -hmm. please come up to us if we don't know you personally. (laughs) Please. Please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd love to meet everybody. I've met just about everybody, I think. Just wait. You're going to see so many people you don't know. (laughs) I I hope not. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Until next time. Until next time.